Hello. Hi, Twitch stream. Hello. And there I am. That window, there I am. We are hello, Twitch stream. Mike was just geeking out hello. about audio, which is what we all usually do, basically. <laughs> Left to our own devices, that's what we do. Absolutely. <laughs> that or video game. Devices. Am I right? What's yes. that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hockey. Well done. I would have done the slow clap, but it wouldn't have come through as easy. That's right. <gasps> I did show uh, Chris... This last week, I picked up a new mic, the AKG 220, was it 200, and uh, I got to tell you, man, it is, it's not a super expensive mic, but man, is it nice. What did you get? The AKG uh, Perception 200. Oh, all right. I thought you said like the AT2200, because I think that's what I have. Yeah, you I, know, I think I know which one you're talking about. Yeah. yeah, you got the AT. That's a great mic, too. It's good. It's I like a very it. nice mic. I mean, if I had the money, then Sennheiser all the way. I mean, I, I can't, I don't know what it is, but it's stuck with me for the last 20 years. Something oh, about let's, Sennheiser. Let's not play if I had the money, because that, uh, that just never ends. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> Can you guys I've hear already, me? I'd have already built my, yeah, you're clear as well. Okay, thanks. Great. Sorry. Go on. You were saying, I was just, if I, if I, <laughs> yeah, if I had the money, I'd have already built my studio in an octagonal scent with, because I've always wanted to do that, like build the the commands part of the studio in the center, with eight sides, and have the recording rooms on eight sides, eight eight recording rooms, and they're all wired to the center room, because an octagon is like the perfect sound setup. Yep. Just the way the walls are set up. Ah, oh, so good. Yeah, I'm uh, the last. Go on. Go ahead. I was I'm, gonna I'm, say the last uh, DIY chip tune that we threw, just chip tune festival that we threw was in like the worst possible structure. Is it a place called the Ice Box? Because it used to be like a meatpacking facility, and it had like oh yeah twenty or forty foot ceilings. And it was oh. just such a giant room made out of like stone. Yeah, bye and, bye and, high end. And the band, and the, yeah, the band. <laughs> and the, the first when the band's day that go we on. did the festival, me and the, yeah. the co-organizers were like, "Jesus Christ, are we gonna make this work for the next two days?" And we did get a little bit better. Like uh, one of the guys actually knows how to EQ somebody who is not me, and we got it acceptable. But yeah, that was yeah, it was that was a rough ride. It was a rough day. It was rough. I remember walking into that place and like feeling like you know I was in a cavern. But as you got closer, I think what you guys did, you just turned it up loud enough that the reflections were quieter than the <laughs> than the initial sound. <laughs> you know, we, we just made our audience so drunk they didn't care. Yeah, right. Well, that too. <laughs> yeah, that works too. That definitely. Can you give works. Andre rights yeah. when you get a second, Chris? Sorry. Oh, right. Yeah. Can you give Andre right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Thanks. That's what it was. Thanks. Yeah, yeah Andre, um, hang on one second. Uh, just don't hear me. Uh, and then, you'll, Andre, you'll probably have to, like, go leave and then come back to oh, how reset it. So that you have Gosh, darn it. Right, okay. right click on him. It. You got it, Adam? Yeah. Yep. Thank there, you. That's, um, there you there he is. Hey. Hello. So, Andre Martinez is, uh, is played Brady in Mandible Judy. And he's a uh, an experienced voice actor, and a man about town, yes. with a mustache. <laughs> he's a man of many talents. <laughs> he is. Um, so Andre, I gotta I gotta show you the the avatar I made for you. I don't know if you if you uh, I don't even to think I told you the Twitch stream URL, but it's twitch.tv slash Wonderville NYC, all lowercase. Wonderville NYC. Wonderville. If you Wonderville NYC. And then uh, just oh, you happen to be live right now. We're live yes. right now at the moment. <laughs> we are live right now. Uh, so if you go there, I can show you. Yep. Let's see. You can see. You see the the I sort of Hollywood Squares you. X X the Hollywood Squares esque X. interface or whatever. What do you call it on television? I it's see not squares. Like yes, there are some yeah. peering so eyes are, inside of some of them. How's that? How's that new mouse working there, Chris? So uh, here's Andre. Wait, oh wait, why am I cutting him? Oh no. Keep this PG. Uh oh, this is bad. Oh, that was PG, absolutely. Rip. All right. 
something's oh I'm, I'm holding the wrong controller Jesus what is wrong with me okay that's Glenn <laughs> sure is and that is Andre <laughs> <laughs> Loading up for me. Give me. Oh my God. You look like D'Artagnan. <laughs> no, he looks like Matt Berry. <laughs> Matt Berry. Yeah. Beautiful. Seeing that a little bit. Yeah. Very good. And there's uh, Mark. Is Mark here? Uh, there he is. <laughs> yeah, so. Wait, who is Mark? That's really what I need to. Mark, you know, Mark Co Costumator. Mark, uh, you know, um, uh, Eamon, you know, Mark. That are, are traveling, you know, the Mark, Mark is with a C. Mark with a C. Yes, thank you. Okay, no, that, he's not here. That Mark. There we go. Okay. I, you have to like be specific with the names because yeah. these are people. Sorry, I'm I'm trying to keep my phone awake, but it keeps going to sleep. So who we got? We got, we have Adam, we have Andre, we have Mike, we have myself, and we have Glenn. And it's another sausage party. Whoa, now, God. I, I keep trying to get a hold of, like, Bonnie and those guys. Yeah. So we, we do our best. Erin Aaron is going to swing by, I think, at some point. But she she double booked, she said, in the uh, in the Discord. So hopefully she'll be by well, that, soonish. You got you to gotta at least give them credit for, like, double booking and having something else to do. I that's mean, right. What, what? I'm sitting here going, that's why I'm here every Thursday. I got nothing else to do right now. So. What else could you have to do? <laughs> Seriously. Right. Yeah. Judy has something to say about know. that. Okay. <laughs> so we should hear this right now, and we're not hearing it. And, you know, I'm kind of okay with that, to be honest. It's kind of weird. What's that? Tamara joining us? Tamara is maybe joining us. She's, I think she's around, but she might, she said she might just have the Twitch stream on the background. She's, she's working on um, a game soundtrack at the moment. So she's also kind of busy. All the women have jobs and the guys are all unemployed. So we're all here basically. That's, that's basically yeah, no what, what it's, what's up. The women are working, gainfully employed. The men are slacking. So I don't know. Yeah, and the men are naked and barefoot in the kitchen. Oh, Jesus. oh that's a good oh. way to get slapped. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Slapped. I forgot we can't make those jokes on Twitch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll be better. I'm sorry. That's yeah, I was okay. Gonna say, in the current, in the current, uh, like political, social, political atmosphere, those two really don't go over anywhere anymore. No, no, you. Yeah, this is not not cool. I'm sorry. Gosh, Glenn. Glenn, I, I, I'm surprised at you. You've got like weird geometry on your head. I should have known better. Colorful ge geometric hat wear. Um, so do you guys want to play a? Uh, since you know, since this looks like it's us, uh, do you want to play Mudscog and Squares, the new, yeah, the brand sure. new horror that's, trivia that's game? Ask questions. Are we all, all okay? Just so here, here's how it works. I'm going to show you the list of categories, and I guess we'll just go top to bottom, top bottom, bottom top. Um, so that would be Mike first, uh, Adam second. I guess I could do this because I probably forgot all the answers. So I'll do one, uh, and then Andre, and then Glenn. Okay. So here are the categories. Oh man, nothing's working. There it is. Categories. Monsters. Gore, disturbing, psychological, paranormal, killer, and international. Remember, this is all about horror. I think it's specifically horror films, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. So Mike I'll have to I'll I'll have to go with monsters. Okay, monsters. Alright, so monsters and the first card says the titular monster in Babadook 2014 is found in a pop-up book titled what? Uh, I did not see the movie. I am out. That's not an answer. I will never be able to answer it. I know. I, I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea that one. I haven't worked out a, a good buzzer sound that's really satisfyingly depressing. Okay. Well, yeah, you got to use the womp womp. Yeah. I have a feeling we're all going to fail this game. Um, I might I might I might win because it seems to favor there are a lot of, of relatively newer movies, but it does seem to favor older movies. 
So. If favorite older movies, you and I are going to have yeah. words. But yeah. The newer yeah. stuff, I'm not really up on. Go ahead. Oh, okay. I, I would assume you, because you, you were always talking about, like, you know, Silent Hill and things like that. And I don't know whether you consider those I, old. Silent Hill is that new. <laughs> okay, but I'm talking, the, they're, ta- they're talking about movies from the 60s and 70s. So that's much okay. older than Silent Hill. Okay, so Adam, your turn. Pick a category. Uh, let, me, let, let me see the list of categories. Oh, so I can read them off to you. Monster or monsters, gore slash disturbing, psychological, paranormal, killer, and international. International meaning foreign films. Okay. International it is. Lee. One, two, three, four, five, six. International. In what century is Onibaba 1964 set? <laughs> I have to say, I'd never heard of Onibaba. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm gonna guess. I can't hear you. I'm going to guess the 8th century. All right. And the answer is, I should have had the answers up in front of me, and I didn't. We're, we're going to, eventually, we'll kind of get this working. Um, it's the 14th century, is the answer. Well, well good. That was my actual first guess. Yeah. <laughs> good, good, good guess. Okay. All right. Uh, I think I am up, and I want, oh, hell, I don't know. I'll go with killer. Why not? In the the oh, theater of blood, only one of my favorite movies. 1973, Jesus. Edward Lionheart recites passages by what playwright? Theater of Blood with Vincent Price. Um, have you any of you guys ever seen this film? I have not. No. It's amazing. It's I'm sure it's on YouTube. It's a, like a trashy hammer style film with Vincent Price and he plays an actor who got really bad reviews when he when he finally did his magnum opus, and he died in like a horrible. No, that was Doctor Fives. It's totally like Doctor Fives. They're almost the same movie. Theater of Blood is more disgusting because it's his revenge, and he comes back from the dead, or maybe he was never really dead, and he basically enacts really hor- horribly gory revenge on each of the theater critics that that panned him. So the answer is Shakespeare. Um, and I should I should be um, I should be talking like this when I'm talking. So here I am talking. It kind of looks like I could talk in a way that looks like I'm lip syncing to looks my like own. You're getting too far away from your dude. mic. Oh, um, I'm actually as far as the Twitch stream goes, uh, I'm good. No, those things are totally animated. They're not voice activated, at least not live. No, not that. You're you're breaking up here. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's because the phone does not reach over here. The Twitch stream is hearing me right. fine because I'm right in front of my Let's main mic. Uh, let me try this. Hopefully that'll work a little better. It's a little closer to me. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, Shakespeare. Shakespeare. Okay. Who's next? We got uh, Andre. So, Andre. All right. Monster, gore disturbing, psychological, paranormal, killer, international. Uh trying to see what's probably the best bet for me um uh, screw it let's try psychological okay that's three throw what? me a low ball all right <laughs> <laughs> just this is random what is the name of the villainous character kathy bates portrays in misery Oof, i don't know that oh, and i've seen the movie twice oh, misery. I... Nah. Yeah, they tend to ask really hard questions about movies you know. Oh, God, I don't know. Um, I remember that she refers to James Caan as Mr. Man, but I don't know what her actual character name is. Is this an iconic movie? Like something that would be abusing? Yeah. Misery was, yeah, Stephen yeah. King. Yes. It was yeah. uh, Kathy Stephen Bates King. and uh, James oh. Caan, 1990. Was, she basically she won, way or later. Even Lauren Bacall. Lauren Bacall was in that. Oh, that's right. Lauren Bacall, yeah. She what did she play? Marcia Sindel. So uh, are you are you googling the answer, or should I just say it? <laughs> I am no. not touching. No. Hey, I okay. listen. Uh-uh. I have integrity. <laughs> no, no, I, I meant Mike. No, 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 no. I meant Mike. But um, no, no, no. I literally like I. The, Stephen King is was one of my favorite authors. So I mean, those I remember a lot of the character names, and I remember that movie pretty well. Yeah, actually, now that I read it, it 
it's it does ring a bell. Annie Wilkes. I totally remember that now. That's a that's a good horror uh, name, Annie Wilkes. Wilkes is just like John Wilkes Booth. Know. You automatically think yeah, of death. I did not remember her name. I yeah. would not have gotten that. I okay. Anyway. Name, she, anyway. Was, yeah. Go on. We're doing real good at this so far. <laughs> yeah, we are oh, we're yeah. really acing it. Okay, Glenn, your turn. Uh, here is the cat. Here are the categories. You want me to read them to you? Send it. Send it. <laughs> like what? You want me to email you? <laughs> yes. Email him. He'll wait till tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Do you do you see the categories, or do you mean to read them to you? I the categories. What? So, and monster. And I don't. I'm gonna, I'm gonna type them out. After You're really far away from your your mic, Glenn, so we can barely my hear. My face is right next to me. Wow, right weird. I can hear mind. like tons of like room room uh, reflections. Room noise. He just moved into a new place, and so his room is empty. There's yeah. There's no carpets. There's no furniture. He's like nope. literally sitting in the middle of the room on a wooden floor with blood all around him on the floor. Because he, you know, pretty much. He murdered yeah. several animals on the way in. Okay, so the categories are monster. That's offensive. It's right next to my cat. You Aww. Now. <laughs> okay, so monsters, um, gore disturbing, psychological, paranormal, killer, and international. Well, in keeping with the theme of things that I say throughout this program, let's go with gore disturbing. All right. You are disturbing. In Final Destination 2, 2003, how does death pursue the characters? The order they escape it or the reverse order they escape it? Oh, wait. Um, you should I, know I this. think it is the order they escape it. Is it? Okay. Let's see. Uh, disturbing. The reverse order they escape it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah, had a 50 50 chance know. there. Yep. <laughs> we are it was really absolutely not this. the obvious answer. Can I try to answer again? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> do I get two shots? Oh my god. We are all right, we're gonna just do one more round and I then I think we'll I'll I'll work on making this a little more smooth. It's kinda it's kinda I wanna I would like to choose C. It's a true false question. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> Okay, Mike. My name is Suction Cup Man. Yeah, go ahead. Mike, your turn. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go with uh, Monster again. Okay, Monster, it is. Here we go. In what decade does it 2017 take place? Oh, 1980s. And the, the answer is in the 1980s. You are right. Um, you are. You are correct, sir. Very good. Oh. That, Definitely my era and my area of the world where I grew up in at that, that time. So that's awesome. Very well done. All right, Adam. Category. You want me to read them to you? Uh, let's go with psychological. Okay, psychological. What surgical instrument does the resurrected Gage Creed steal from his father to commit his murders in Pet Cemetery, 1989? Okay, well, that's a that's a that's a pretty good one. In fact, you probably should have written the story because it's just a scalpel. Right, I was you know I was gonna say it's the obvious answer. Yeah, <laughs> oh, well. medical instruments. Scalpel. It's like basically whatever was right in front of him. He didn't really think this through too much. He just kind of went with what was right there. Yep. All right. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, next up, who do we have next up? We have me. Oh, I'm gonna go with uh, hell. I don't know, killer. I think. Go with what? What? I was going to say go with international just because I got to see exactly okay. how. Okay, we go with international. We'll go with international. Yeah. The Wailing you're, you're never involved. saw it. 2016. What family member of the protagonist becomes affected by the supernatural affliction? I'm just going to say his sister, and I swear I'm not looking at the answers, at least not yet. And the mm -hmm. answer is his daughter. I had it wrong. See, I could have cheated, and I didn't. You could have. Huh? Because it I. It was called The Wailing? Yeah, the wailing. It's because I'm, I am an honest I man. That, that is why. Is that wailing with an H or wailing with two? Yeah, right. <laughs> aye, pirate, aye, matey. We're going wailing with our 
our daughters and our protagonists and our supernatural afflictions. Um, you want to go like sea shanties about whaling? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I Ooh. this uh, Ooh. yeah. It reminds me, I had a um, a uh, a what do they call that when you get like a sudden flash, like an, a brilliant idea suddenly? There's a word epiphany? for it. Epiphany. Epiphany. Thank epiphany. you. I had an epiphany two days ago as I was walking around shitty Kensington, Brooklyn, and uh, and that was to make a horror podcast at sea, with and and make it a sequel to Under Dead Water, and I'm I'm writing it in my head for the last two days, and it's gonna be fun and Called over dead water over de- <laughs> nice. Nice. under under really deep dead water, yeah. Um, but I, but I, I have a friend who plays concertina like really well. You know what a concertina is? Little squeeze box accordion, <clears throat> the tiny one. You know what I'm talking about? It looks like a loaf of bread. Oh yeah. Yeah, he plays concertina really well. He's English, Irish, and he basically can sing like sea shanties. And I'm totally just gonna ask him to collaborate on the soundtrack. So I'll do the horror parts. He'll do the sea shanties, and we'll do a really messed up. <clears throat> horror at sea creatures under the water okay anyway um who's next it's andre your second chance at, at proving how brilliant you are uh, with these things uh, gosh <laughs> no pressure uh, man yeah no pressure. not even a little bit so let's just take a fish and throw him out of water <laughs> <laughs> uh let's see you know what um let's try monster maybe we'll get something that's straightforward all right the titular monster in they like that word titular i think it's because you know yes they do yeah it's vaguely <laughs> scatological oh wait we're, we did this question already didn't we no did we i don't th- oh no we oh, did what, what, we did what's the question oh weird what's how did it come question? up again the titular monster and babadook did we do babadook already oh yeah how strange yeah, it came up the first question. all right like, so let's try it again in ginger snaps 2000 ginger becomes what supernatural creature Never saw. Oh, I know the answer. Uh, uh, a vampire. All right. No. Okay. Well, I'm guessing from Mike's answer that that is not the answer, and it's a werewolf. But uh, good try. Good try. Highly recommend that movie if you haven't seen it, by the way. Yeah, I've never even really heard good. of it. Ginger Snaps. Interesting. Yeah. It's a very. It's kind of independent feeling. Mm-hmm. But uh, the main characters are like teenage girls, and they really don't know what's going on, which makes it, you know, that much more psychological. Mm-hmm. Are they all gingers? Uh, <laughs> I think one of them is. I'm not sure. I don't remember what the title is referencing. It's a '90s '90s movie, I think. Um, it says 2000. Yeah, close. Okay, yeah. That that's a '90s movie. <laughs> that's yeah, close enough. Yeah. Uh, so, Glenn, what do you think? category I promise I won't make category. you do this again tonight uh ah, your empty promises <laughs> uh, psychological psychological it is what is the amount of money Marion Crane steals at the beginning of Psycho 1960 now I've seen this movie probably 10 times and I don't wow. know the answer to this uh, $500,000 U.S. <laughs> is that okay? 500000 Uh It's actually 40000 but. <laughs> wow. Yes. Oh, oh, hey, you know, I didn't think of that. Probably pretty close. Was it $40,000? $40, it was 40000 yeah, 40, 40000 yeah. Somebody look it up at Google it. What's 40000 worth? They today? already are. Yeah. In 19, uh, what, what year was it? 1960. 1960. Yeah. In 2021, it would be 354,000. Okay. I'm still, <laughs> so you're still over. You're still over budget. And and, and <laughs> yeah, but I mean, Glenn was closer than uh, than the. Oh answer. yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that we're gonna we're gonna call that a win. Yeah. All right. Uh, well. <laughs> okay, I'll take it. All right. We got a couple of uh, yes answers. I mean, positive uh, winning answers and a couple of not so winning answers and. Uh, Oh, you know what I didn't do, though? I didn't show you guys the marvelous... Oh, I don't know if I can now. Here it is. The Mudscoggin Squares. And because we can't hear the sound, we're not hearing the lovely theme that I wrote for it. Um, I'm not sure what happened. Every now and then, Little Big Planet just stops... Sound just stops working. I don't really know why. Why? 
While you're figuring that out, I, w I do want to tell you that my sister's actually listening to for the first time through with uh, Mandible Judy, and she was extremely impressed with the music. Oh, how nice. That's awesome. Yeah. We, we definitely love hearing uh, feedback. That's uh, excellent. We generally don't get enough feedback. I wish I wish uh, our listeners would, would write in and say things occasionally. I mean, we definitely are getting downloads, um, but I don't know. Maybe they're all like, you know, scared or something, or I don't know. I had the same we issue with mine, too. Out there on Twitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I'd love to do with this 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 show, this uh, game, this uh, trivia yeah. game in the future is to get, is to have uh, each, uh, when, a, when a contestant doesn't know the answer, they can ask the Twitch audience, and the Twitch audience can, can tell them. And, uh, oh, yeah. yeah, that'd be great. And maybe they win. Line? they win prizes or something. Yeah, I think that would be, I think we'll try to make that work for next week. Um, I'm not looking at the Twitch stream because I can only have so many things running at the same time. Um, unfortunately, if any of you guys are looking at the Twitch stream, is there, are, are, are we getting any chatter in the chat? Uh, yeah, Tamara's in chat. Hi, Tamara. Awesome. Uh, Hi, Tamara. And, uh, B. Oh, that would be Ken. Ken, oh, you know, Ken. Ken should have been part of this. Ken, Ken, I want you to be part of this next week if you would, if you're willing. Um, I'll send you an invite. Um, did I tell? Oh God, I probably invited you to this, and then like I, I didn't hear back, and I don't know, or maybe I did. I'm a spaceman. Um, okay, so um, I wanted to. to uh, we have uh, this is Andre's first time here, so I wanted to, you know, just kind of find out what makes the man tick. Do you tick? Oh God! Are you ticking? Uh, is I that have... you or is that a bomb? Spotlight <laughs> swings. I have eye ticks. I don't know if that counts. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I am in in uh, my secret identity is the tick. So um, nice. I, I remember, I'm trying to remember how we I came across you. I, it, did you answer uh, audio? Probably audio Facebook. Hub? It was yeah. on Audio Drama Hub, I believe. Audio Drama Hub. Right. Yes. Excellent. Yeah, a good place for uh, for casting audio drama. I found. Um, it's, Absolutely. Yeah, and it's you know, I don't know what your experience is, is but I mean, it, I've been really impressed by the quality of, of voice actors out there that are doing this for fun. It's kind of nuts. It's, yeah, I mean, it's all just about like who you end up with. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's 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 great to see people as passionate about it. And um, just to kind of branched off from that, I don't know if you guys have heard of the platform Story More that's coming out really, really soon, uh, which is mm -hmm. kind of like the Netflix of audio dramas. I'm really excited for that. Um, oh, wow. It's like, yeah, you basically you, you sign up and then there's like a whole selection you can choose from. And um, it's, whew, it's, it's, looking, it's looking pretty, pretty tasty. So that's what I've been kind of diving into audio drama wise. Um, but yeah, very cool. Yeah, yeah. I did. I hear. I heard. I heard uh, rumblings about that, and I haven't really had time to look into it. But it sounds great. Um, yeah, we should definitely fantastic. be involved in that. Um, so what? Uh, so are you? What's your background, Andre? Are you? Are you uh, a voice actor by trade normally? Uh, oh, do you gosh. do a number um, of things? I yeah. I mean, like this is kind of the only thing I can do since the pandemic hit, of course. But yeah. um, I, it's, I kind of just. I think that the pandemic kind of exacerbated everything because I tried to be an on-camera actor in LA. Mm -hmm. That, of course, see how that turned out. Uh, um, <laughs> where, where are you based, by the of, way? I am based in Arizona now. Okay. I used to be in LA, and then um, things just kind of fell through, and then um, I, I, I met the most fantastic partner in the world, and now I'm living with them. Okay. Um, nice. So it was just a complete out of nowhere. <laughs> kind of thing but yeah i used to i used to do a lot of stuff in la and then yeah i moved out here um we're up in the mountains so it's very it's nice and uh pretty decent weather we got snow a couple times uh, mm -hmm. last month and uh it's, it's super chill but with regards to the background i i started in theater uh back in middle school high school that kind of thing and then uh i moved to la because i was like oh i'm gonna be a film director <laughs> yeah <laughs> Uh, anyway, so, I mean, I didn't waste my time in film school. I, I don't I don't consider any of that time wasted, but uh, I definitely kind of found out. I'm like, hey, 
This acting thing makes more sense. I'll be honest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, so I, I kind of stuck with that. And, uh-huh. uh, um, and now I'm just kind of really knee deep in it. I've uh, um, done a couple indie games for, for Steam. I've, I've been on a Crunchyroll show. Uh, and I just, I just want more. I want more. <laughs> yeah, excellent. That's great, man. I, I also went to film school. I went to NYU. Where did you, where did nice. you, you went out and uh, went out west someplace? I imagine. Yeah, it yeah. was uh, Loyola Marymount University. Awesome. Um, I almost went to NYU. I got in. Then uh-huh. I saw the tuition, and I was like, yeah. no. Yeah, no. it was it was better no. times when when I went. <laughs> better times in the sense that my my uh, my my fam my mom and mom and dad were able to pay for it, uh, so that was excellent. Um, after that, not so much. Um, it bankrupted them. Yeah. No, it totally didn't bankrupt them, but it was very expensive, um, even for God the early '80s when I went. Um, and uh, yeah, cool. So, um, Chris, didn't you go to film school back when? Yeah, exactly. That was that was uh, when I said a lot. I meant a lot Man. for 1932 when I went. You know, it was very expensive back then. <laughs> for back then, yeah. No, when I I went, uh, Haig Manujian was still alive and he was still teaching at NYU. He was the head of the department. And I don't know if you, if you guys have ever seen Raging Bull. It, at the end, it says dedicated to ha- Haig Manujian. It was um, Scorsese's favorite film teacher um, when he went there. Mm. And um, mm. and he and he was like, we, when you got you were lucky enough to get Haig's ear and talk to him, he would always have a story about Marty. Marty and I used to do this with the Steenbecks. We used to edit over here in the edit room together. Late at night, he'd bring the coffee. You know, <laughs> like he was like <laughs> this old New York dude. But um, yeah, it was a fun time. I I enjoyed it a lot. But yeah, it was way too expensive. School shouldn't be that expensive. It was insane. Yeah. It was just insane. And yeah. You know, I think it's 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 too bad. Education it's been kind of decimated in the in the United States in a lot of ways. But oh yeah, it was due a wake up call. To be honest, I mean, it can't be this expensive. You know, it doesn't guarantee you a job. I mean, you, it shouldn't be a, a job mill. You know, it should be a place people go to get educated. You know, not just to get work. Find out but, what they want to do. Yeah, yeah find out what yeah. they want to do and be, basically become a more well rounded, interesting human being. You know. <laughs> Yeah, I just, like, I hate the amount of pressure they put, especially on high schoolers nowadays, like, where you're expected to, you know, like, what your career is when you're a high school student, because that's, no, no, (laughs) no, like, you know, people find their careers when they're 40, you know, it's like, it's, it's not a set thing, you know, you don't, you don't, you don't finish high school knowing exactly what you're going to do, where you're going to go, what salary you're going to get, you're not thinking about salaries when you're, what, 16 or 17, no. No, it's very true. Yeah, I, I I mean especially guys guys mature much slower than than women do and like I all I know is I was like a waste of breath when I was that age you know like I was inspired I was doing creative stuff and all that so as an artist I was kind of learning and you know becoming an adult in that way but as a social human no I was very far from being an adult and uh, mm. you know you can't really make really good informed decisions until you. You grow up like that. Um, maybe it was just, I don't know. I did come from a fairly, you know, upper middle class suburban life, you know, and so that probably had something to do with it. My son, who grew up in the city, um, is like way more mature at 25 than I was. He's he's just about to graduate um, American University. Nice. But, I don't um, think we've had to, had to be mature up until like the last 15 or 20 years like you and i especially yeah. back then it was like nobody there was nothing serious enough that <laughs> felt like you know except like, for so vietnam like you know there's games that and drinking well yeah but that was that was that was the year i was born so yeah same yeah. I, mean, it was, it, I was i was too young way too young for that but um my brother was just my older brother was just a, on just on the cusp of the of the draft age and they um by the time he he became draft age the war was over but um, my dad, I remember my dad at the dinner table saying, no son of mine is going to fight in that goddamn war. <laughs> wow. That was a pretty interesting, yeah, interesting memory. <clears throat> Bob Burke, he, he became uh, 
he was kind of like a, he was a lifelong Democrat and then he voted Reagan and then he basically became further and further Republican as as time went on. Jeez. Oh, and yeah, I mean, look, I'm not going to say I hate all Republicans, but, you know, I mean, I, I, it, it, it's uh, it just was strange in our family. He was the only one. Everybody else were we were all basically artists and we're all very liberal, to say the least. So he, he was in line yeah. with us when when we were young, and then as we all got older, he got more, he, he ended by like watching Fox News. Yeah, I remember. Oh. Yeah, just before he died, um, I I miss my dad an awful lot, and I'm joking about him, but I really do miss him enormously. He was a, he was a great guy, he really was. But towards the end, he had Parkinson's. He was not really thinking straight. And I remember in the nursing home, I was with him one day and the TV was on and he saw Trump on television. It was like the year before the election. And he looked at me and he said, that guy would make a good president. <laughs> you broke up. That guy would make what? A good president. Oh, God. Yeah. I was hoping that Funny. was what you didn't say. Yeah, no. <laughs> and I just, I just, I, I just, I didn't even say anything to him. I just grabbed the remote and turned the TV off. <laughs> Unfortunately, that didn't stop yeah. Trump from running and winning. Uh, anyway, yeah. but yeah, so yeah, this um, became morose. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, yeah sorry. So we got, we got death. We got Trump. We what else can we talk about that's depressing? Um, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, whoa, hello. Somebody just joined us, by the way. Oh, who's with us? Um, I would not know how to say that. J H H L. Oh, that's Henry. Hello, Henry. Hi, Henry. Henry. So Henry I don't think Henry is. Has a voice yet. Um, let, uh, hey, Adam. Henry would you so do the good. honors and give Henry? Adam's Henry on is, it. what? Adam is on it. Yeah, Adam's, Adam's on, on it. Thank you. Sorry, I couldn't hear you guys. Um, I some of you are louder than others. I'm not sure why that is, but um, but thank Henry, you, Adam. You jump out and jump back in. You so Henry uh, Lowengard is. That's good because I was ho I was h hoping he would join. He. Um, if, I don't know if you, any of you guys listened to the, it just went up yesterday, the new episode of Under Dead Water. And Henry sings a, um, he's like the old man by the lake who sings a folk song about. Here, am I live? Hello, Henry. You are. Wow. Alrighty. Hey. So I, I involved Henry in this project because we're, you yeah, know, we've been friends since, I don't know, God, 1994, three or something. When, when did we meet, Henry? A long time ago. I don't ago. know. I mean, uh, I think you knew Nancy longer than me. Yeah. Or maybe not. I did. I knew Nancy from FAIR, Fairness and Accuracy in mm -hmm. Reporting, where we, we both worked for a while. And then uh, she started dating you and, and eventually married you. And uh, and uh, I remember meeting you at a party for FAIR, and we were talking about music, and they were, you were like, oh, yeah, I, I do WFMU's webpage. And I was like, oh, my God, I need to I need to be best friends with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> WFMU, for you guys not from the East Coast, is like a really good college station. Actually, it's international, so you can get it on. It hasn't been a college station since the college, yeah. you know, went yeah. out of business. That's quite true. Around 95. The college went out of business, and WFMU was the only part of it that survived. Yes. <laughs> That's such an excellent story. Yeah, so um, we, I, Henry, still, you're still doing their web, their website, right? No. No? But uh, every once in a while, I will fix something or okay. throw something up uh, on screen or make some graphics or something. Okay. But they have other people doing that stuff. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, but if you dig around, you can find things that I put in there. Yeah. You yeah. have to dig a little. <laughs> yeah. So Henry is, is kind of a jack of all trades. He's a, I guess, I guess, I guess you could say the most general description would be programmer, right? Is that accurate? Artist programmer? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So do you want to talk a little bit about your uh, your endeavors? Well, I mean, I was actually working on one here, and then I looked up and I saw it was after 9 o'clock, and I said, I better jump in. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I write. Uh, these days I'm, I'm writing a lot of iPhone apps uh, because they're fun, and, uh, you know, I can pay my phone bill with them, basically. I don't make a whole lot of money. <laughs> But a lot of my stuff uh, are thought experiments, so they're kind of experimental music apps. Uh, and some of them are really silly. Like I made an app. I don't know if you know anything about experimental music, but mm -hmm. uh, 
there's a very famous piece called I Am Sitting in a Room where um, Alvin Lucia sat in a room right. with a tape recorder and basically said something into it and then let it play in the room and record the echoes in the room uh, over and over about 70 times until there was nothing left of the sound at all except the, uh, the echoes uh, of the room itself feeding in the rhythm of the original speech. Well, I wrote a little app to do something like that. You know, it's that kind of stuff. U useful stuff, in other words. <laughs> yeah, really, you know, the kind of things that, you know, people want to put beats. You know, my musical taste is kind of anti-beat, anti-12 equal, um, anti-4-4. Four four. Uh, you know, it's it, it doesn't have any of that stuff. Um, yeah. You know, I'm probably best known for things like Dronio, which is a, a, a droning app that... Uh, you know, none of those pieces have beginnings or ends, and uh, they move kind of slowly, uh, but they're generative. And uh, I've written like hundreds of things to run on it. Henry, did you do? do I remember. Really... I remember once I was at Bob Lukomsky's place, and he showed us a um, an app he was using. I think it was one of yours that um, takes a visual. Yeah, it was yours. It takes the visual and it translates it into notes. Like yeah, there was from your cell phone bit, camera. Uh, you know, some things are out of the app store because Apple likes to uh, decide that things uh, are don't belong there anymore. Right. <laughs> are too old. Yeah. So yeah, I used to have apps where you can draw the spectrum and you can hear it, synthesize it in the real time. Right. Uh, mm. While you're drawing it or erasing it, for that matter. So um, yeah, I used to do a thing where I'd analyze some sound and I'd make a little template. And then I could draw under the template, and you'd hear bits of the sound come in, and suddenly it would it would start speaking. You would start to recognize it speaking, um, and then you could erase it again. It was a very uh, you have to listen, <laughs> listen closely. Excellent. So, so, so Henry, are, sorry, go ahead. So I was just gonna. So these are these are apps that you know when civilization falls, these are the ones I want on my phone. Yeah. <laughs> Civilization fell so long ago. Yeah. I don't know why. I have to it. It's not just you know mudscoggin. You know no that's doubt. just a metaphor for what's really going on around here. Agreed. <laughs> oh wow! So I um I knew that Henry played auto harp, and in fact um um this this piece that's playing in the background right now um which i guess is called um well it has a number of names cuz there's about a bunch of different versions but it's the zither piece that um that bonnie plays in mandible judy which helps to calm the uh the rocks and the creatures and get rid of uncle pate and all that but um i originally asked henry to write something on auto harp what he wrote was fantastic he wrote a little song about calming the frogs which was real froggy and a rock calm down it was just amazing and i thought well this is like a folk song it doesn't really fit what I, what the story became so i couldn't use it so what i did instead was here this is the song here uh this is but this is the one i wrote i kind of based it off of what you wrote henry but it's very different mm -hmm. um it's the same kind of you know sort of melody folk folk tune type of melody but um so i came back to henry for under dead water because i wanted there to be a character sitting by the lake with an auto harp singing a song about a little girl who who got lost in the lake basically and uh so i wrote to henry i sent him an email like literally like a week ago and said um not even a week ago and i said um Hey, you know, here's my idea. Do you think you, you could uh, uh, I could take your um, your auto harp that you wrote for the other for Manable Judy and just make up some lyrics and sing over top of it? And I told him what the story for the song would be, and he sent me like in about ten minutes. He sent me back an email that said, "You mean like this?" And he had all, an entire song in lyrics written out about the little girl nice. goes down by the lake, and uh, her name is Willow, which is perfect because Willow by the lake and all that, and. Um, and then within a couple of days, he had recorded it uh, and sent me the stems, and I mixed it into the episode. And it came out; I think it came out great. It's in Under Dead Water episode six, which just went up on Wednesday. Yeah, I think it's. It, uh, uh, I was wondering how it would fit in sonically, but I think it sort of put me on the porch. That's. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, I, I what I did was I put a um a kind of a slapback echo on everybody's voice and on the instrument so that it would sound like it was in a place. Like it was maybe the the forest, a little bit of soft bounce off the forest canopy, kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I think it, it it 
you don't you don't think hey that's coming from somewhere else which is the key <laughs> you know right but, um, it wasn't like, hey, he turned on the radio and there's a song. Yeah, exactly. Oh, man, I hate that so much when they do that on television. Like suddenly, <laughs> you know, there's somebody supposed to be singing or whatever. And then suddenly you can hear it's all backing instruments and full orchestra. And there's like a bass player and a drummer, <laughs> you know, it just drives me nuts. So, um, I, yeah. I do have a question, Henry, with everything that's been said in the way that you talk about music. Is it safe to assume you have a theremin? Ha <laughs> I uh, do have a theremin. I have two kinds of theremins. Uh, one that you know, I built them both, but um, you know, one of them was a Paya kit, if you know them. Oh yeah. Uh, Era Max. Uh, it's really wonky. I only turn it on on Halloween, and it kind of makes some good noises. <laughs> I did a little video where I was doing kind of a duet with this other program I have called Ami, which is actually in a weird way, kind of like a theremin. What it uses, it uses a video tracking to trigger sounds. And the right. idea is for people who are severely disabled to be able to uh, play music with other people and interact with them kind of on an equal basis, which is cool, lots awesome. of fun. It's free, go get it It's in the app store. Um, Ami, A-U-M-I. Um, so I was doing a duet with, you know, uh, with Ami and the theremin. <laughs> because all I had to do was move around. I wasn't touching anything. <laughs> <laughs> nice. well, that's why that's why theremins are so cool. Like I, I've I've always it's it's magnetic resonance, right? Um, no, it's like you're a cap, you're a capacitor. Uh, it changes. There's some, there are two very high frequency oscillators, and your the fact that you and air kind of make a capacitive. Um, it, it, it changes the frequency of this extremely high frequency thing and you're hearing the difference tone. Okay, um, all right. Then the, you know, and a similar thing is going on with the volume, uh, with the volume antenna. Um, and so uh, you put them all together and the circuitry is actually kind of simple. Um, but on the other hand, uh, it's really hard to play because, um, you know, everything is so unstable. <laughs> But uh, you can get used to it. And, um, you know, I know a few thereminists who uh, have figured out how to do it successfully. But I'm not really that great at that. I'm much more, uh, much more, uh, uh, you know, I, I used to do a lot of uh, analog and uh, a little bit of um, circuit bending. <laughs> but I got tired of solder smoke going up my nose. So yeah. I swapped to software. <laughs> I get you on that one. Ugh, yeah, soldering is gross. Yeah, so I'm yeah, auto harps. Stuff, I sure have a lot of auto harps. <laughs> nice. So uh, this is gonna this is gonna out me as a bad southerner because I feel like I should know what an auto harp is. <laughs> what is an auto harp? <laughs> and go. Yeah. I I bring them out and people say that's a really nice looking harpsichord you got there. <laughs> So, yeah, a lot of people don't know what an auto harp is. They're um, not alone. You know, maybe Adam. they saw them in in church, or they saw them in school and never saw them again. Uh, yeah. But basically, was... it's it's a zither. Uh, you know, it's a box that is sort of trapezoidal, or actually, it's like a, you know, like a, a rectangle with a corner cut off of it, because the long strings are where the long part is, and the short strings are where the short part is. So that's sort of what it looks like. Except there's this box on top. And in the box are bars with felts on the bottom. And if you push the bar down with a button, uh, it damps out notes that are not in a chord. Uh, so it, you sort of have to think backwards. Instead of like a piano where you push the keys down and the notes play here, you push the bar down and the notes <laughs> don't play. But you can push one of them and instantly get a chord. I could demonstrate that you're not watching. Um, <laughs> Um, I could turn the video on here. It looks like, well, I, uh, I put in a picture of it in the public broadcast text chat for okay. you, Adam. Oh, all right. I, That's good. Yeah. Okay. So I, I felt like I had seen one of these before and mm -hmm. I had exactly zero idea what it was. So that was rad. And somebody called this a harpsichord. <laughs> People don't know what it is. Dude, I'm, I, harpsichords are a stand up. They're, they're like, they look like a piano. They do. Yeah. 
<laughs> they have little they have little things called jacks inside that actually kind of pluck the strings instead of pianos with hammer on them. Right. So uh, so it has a more so plucky weird. sound to it. Yeah. Yeah, so, all those wonderful sounds. Well, you know, you know, the auto harp got to be really really popular. You have to realize there was a time when there weren't any uh, there was no recorded music. Uh, there was no mass entertainment like 5,000 people sitting in a theater and seeing the same movie that people in the next city over are seeing or this playing the same record. Closest was playing player piano roles. So you needed these instruments and everybody sort of wanted to play some music and uh, auto harps got to be very popular because they're kind of portable, a lot more portable than a piano. And right. for some reason, people were not playing guitars yet. I think that they felt like guitars were, you know, belonging to Spanish people <laughs> or mandolins, you know, it's Italian people. So, you know, <laughs> uh, there was kind of a thing about that. <clears throat> but uh, I don't know, auto harps, they're kind of like Germanic people almost. But um, yeah, weren't they descended uh, from uh, li uh, liars? Lears? I never know how to say that. Well, they're all from zithers. I mean, yeah. they're like. The zither family. There's a zillion instruments that are sound boxes with strings stretched over them, sometimes mm -hmm. with uh, with little bridges on them so that you can change their pitches and stuff. And, you know, every culture that, they can, that has strings and a way to get them tight over a box has an instrument like this. So I, I play hammer dulcimer also, and that's, you know, a lot bigger and heavier. <laughs> yeah. that, one, that one you sit on your lap. You're not carrying that one. Yeah. I do carry that one. <clears throat> I'm, you know, I've got a little case. I built an excellent stand out of PVC pipes uh, nice. that I use for when I'm playing it. It's very lightweight and uh, it looks like it can't possibly work, but it does. So that's really very nice. <laughs> so I don't know if, if, you so anyway. guys, if you guys are watching the Twitch stream, but I'm looking really creepy in the dark right now. Um, I, I put my, my video feed into Little Big Planet. So I'm actually oh. going to perform a song. I've got like a three and a half minute, not even a three minute performance, a micro performance, if you will. And this actually, it's this, it's the track that we were talking about earlier that was inspired by what Henry wrote, and then we end up using his track in this in Under Dead Water. So I'm going to start this. Uh, I think I've got my MPC 1000 right here. I don't know if you guys can see that. There it is. So. Uh, yeah. Everything, I think everything's ready. Let's see. Yes, it works. Eureka. Okay, here we go. Without further ado.
Very short. So that track, I I think we uh, on the uh, original soundtrack that will be released. I keep saying it's going to be released soon. It'll be released soon. I promise. Um, that's called Bonnie and Isabella because they're the two that make that crap happen. Anyway, are we all still here? Yeah. All right. Okay. Yes, sir. We're here. Look, babies. Wait, where are the babies? There they are. We got babies. Hmm. Baby heads, hands. I didn't use those. I forgot all about them. I used them in the last one. <laughs> so I gotta. Um, now I gotta do like you know, little big planet crap. How do I do this? I forgot. So um, Glenn, are you still with us? I am. All right, Glenn is still with us, ladies and gentlemen. Woo. What's up? What I miss? Um, everything. Uh, so, um, awesome. tell us what's going on with you because we we never hear about the Glenn. Um, you know, are you able to? Uh, are you allowed to tell us anything, or do you have to kill us if 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 we find out or something like that? No, I don't. I don't have to kill anyone. Oh, that's good. Yeah. He just yeah. Just likes it. <laughs> So I'm looking for a treatment for my microphone. Uh, I moved. Yep. So I got a bookcase. Got a dresser. I got my cat next to me. Meow. What's your cat's name? We know. Tess. I know. Miss Tess. Tess of the Dubervilles. See if I can, I'll try to see if I can pull a... Uh, What kind of questions you got? I, that was my question. That's the exact question that I got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, well, we didn't, you know, Glenn and I, you know, uh, I mean, we lived in Philly until recently. He's living in San Diego, environs at the moment. Um, but San Diego, I mean, uh, Phil, the, he was part of the Philly Chiptune crew. And so um, we, we went to visit a lot. Um, because Philadelphia is a wonderful place to visit. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> kind of breaking up there. Yeah, we, we couldn't hear. Oh, that's we good. Were... I'm glad you couldn't hear me because I was being insulting. Um, no, uh, Philadelphia is oh, awesome. No. I love Philadelphia. Um, and I just said that. I said Philadelphia is a nice place to visit, and I'll leave it at that just because Glenn is always down on New York. Glenn hates New York. Don't you hate New York, Glenn? New York's all right if you like saxophone. Oh, I set you up for that one. Nice. <laughs> well done. Man. Oh, you, shite. You open the door and expect me not to walk through it? Yeah. That's your fault. I wonder if that, that was, um, that's a Philly band, right? They, um, God, New what are they? No, called? that's New York. That is no, oh, it's Flipper. No, who was it? I first, men. what? No, no, but what? Who who said New York's all right if you like saxophones? I thought that was um, Lee Ving from Fear. Fear, that's who it was. Okay, you know, I was I got them confused with um, who's the amazing Philly band, the the Dead Milkmen. Everything's falling. So oh God! It's the Dead Milkmen, <sighs> right? They're the ones who did Bitch and Camaro, and no, is that not nice? The don't no, I think you're right because the Dead Milkman also did um, something about Beelzebub. <laughs> I like that title just as it is. Something about Beelzebub. I don't. I used to have that album too. Oh. Ow! Did that hurt when it when it fell? Yeah. You guys can't hear me now, or I can. I can't hear you rather. Oh my! The Twitch stream lost our Discord. You guys there still? We're still yes. here. Okay, we lost you for a moment because I dropped the Broke phone. It. I dropped the phone. It keeps. Nice. I, just, work. I just don't have enough enough length on any of these cables, and they're all just kind of teetering <laughs> on the edge of. Yeah, I was laughing at that too. Sounds like it's time for a trip to Monoprice. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my 
my god. <laughs> the music suddenly got really loud. Jesus. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. Um, Sorry about that. So, yeah. Oh, good. It's the actual album, my friend. Uh, the Dead Milkman Beals of Bubba. Oh, nice. Ooh. Yeah, they had one record... Um, Tamara's probably answering all this in the in the Twitch chat right now because she knows the answers to these things. But I, th nice. I think they had... Um, they basically were like kind of always parodying a new wave band, which was kind of funny because they were a punk band and they just were like trying to look like really kind of commercial, cheesy new wave, you know, like Duran Duran or something. Mm -hmm. um, or not always, but they did that sometimes. Um, but, you know, it's a little known fact where the name Dead Milkman comes from. I think I told you this before, didn't I, Mike? Uh, not this no? one. No, please enlighten me. I'm I'm so full of stories. So um, I think it was the Germs. Um, they, you know, were a punk band, and they, uh, I guess, at some point, um, one of them they went over to to visit their friend, and when they got there, it turned out that the milkman had just delivered the milk and had a heart attack on their front stoop and died on their front stoop. Oh God. Yeah, it's tragic. I don't know why I'm laughing. Because what huh. they did is just horrifying, but kind of funny because it's so sick. It's not funny at all. I'm just going to say that. But, it's um, called dark humor. They, it's very dark humor. dark humor. They they basically propped the guy up on the front porch and took selfies with the, the corpse of the dead milkman. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's a little over the line, but still. It's very much yeah. over the line. No, and weekend at Bernie's, your public It's very weekend at Bernie's, yeah, yeah. except, yeah. Except in real life. In real life. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, I th I'm pretty sure, I never heard confirmation from this, but it ha the name, the band, The Dead Milkman, came out like very soon after that happened. So I always assumed that they must have read that in a news article and used the... Uh, because you, you reminded me of, uh, especially when you were talking about how they would make fun of new wave bands, you remember Depeche Mode? Yes. Well, there was a band that was in direct response to Depeche Mode called KMFDM. KMFDM. <laughs> yes. Which a lot of people, like, you know, picked up right away, which was Kill MF Depeche Mode. Yeah. KMFDM. Ha, I never got that. Yep. And, and, um, and they, they claimed later that it stood for other things as well, and they kept changing what they said it stood for. Yeah. Uh, just to kind of keep people guessing. Like, oh, okay, sure. Yeah, exactly. Sure, I'll go with that. They were a lot of fun, KMFDM. Yeah. Um, I yeah yeah got some favorite songs. And I always sure. wondered too, because you you've heard you know Fear, the band Fear. Yeah. But you know Fear Factory. No. Fear Factory was a later band, more like industrial metal, heavier stuff like that. Uh huh. So it it had the same. Because Fear was like, they were a heavy punk band. Yeah. It was a lot, you know, it was like pretty speed stuff. And then when Fear Factory came out, I don't remember exactly what year it was. I think it was like early, late 90s, early 2000s, somewhere in that area. And they kind of carried on with it, but then they went very uh, electronic metal sounding. Uh-huh. Sort of industrial. Up, yeah, kind of yeah. an industrial metal. I ended up like, they one of the bars I worked at in North Hollywood, they came and hung out there a couple of times and I got to know the lead singer and the guitar player for a while. Super cool guys, like mm -hmm. nice guys. It's just, it's one <laughs> of those instances, if you've ever heard like a, a thrash metal band, you know, like Slayer or something like that, and you hear them doing their screaming thing and then you meet them. <laughs> and for instance, the, the guy from Fear Factory is like, you know, six foot four, and wow. he is the most soft-spoken guy you'll ever talk to. Like you, you, have to you have to like lean in and go, what, what? Yeah. And, but yet his screaming is like, you know, enormous. Rob wow. Halford's like that. His yeah. Each voice is amazing. He's the most soft-spoken and really eloquent. Like all of his interview interviews, he just sounds like really thoughtful. Very quiet. Who are you talking about, Glenn? Rob Halford. Oh yeah. Okay. Yep. Well, I'm neither soft spoken nor am I intelligent and thoughtful. Nor <laughs> am I. Your thingy voice sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and my singing voice sucks. 
Oh. Yeah, yeah. Can you do that? Can you do that bit from the hills are alive with the sound of music? Just you know, for the stream. For the stream. <laughs> you can hear that. The hills are alive. <laughs> oh my! God. They're coming for you. The hills have eyes. Yeah, right. The oh, hills are alive. Yeah, that's where that eyes. one's going. Yeah. Oh. That actor was so underrated. Oh man, brilliant. All right. Part so of a lifetime. Stuff. Um. I am. It is the top of the hour, so I will have to hop off. All right. Um, did you have any additional questions for me? Um, I have the question: Are would you be willing to be to play a part in Under Dead Water? If the Maybe price I'll is right and can, time uh, is there. Yeah. Exactly. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Reach out. Yeah. Yeah. It would be great to have you involved. Um, Andre, thanks so much for for dropping by. Um. It, this is very much Absolutely. a work in progress, as you can see. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. Uh, We're working out all, the kinks. I, I feel it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a Twitch stream. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Stay safe, Andre. Take it easy, man. Will Thanks do. so much. Talk yeah, to you later. soon. All right. Oh, I totally should have gotten him to do some Brady lines. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> well, next time. Yeah. Yeah, he, he, he did a, a good you know roid rage cop kind of SWAT team dude just kind of worked yeah, if you out. do write me into under dead water can you give me like at least a few good sarcastic lines i'm it's like my favorite <laughs> type to deliver i love sarcasm oh yeah yep dry wit yeah we got you, yep. you got it you got it I mean, I don't know if we, if you can classify anything I read as wit, but yeah, that's uh, that'll happen. You don't do too bad. <laughs> we try. Yes. So it's too bad Mark didn't show up because you know, he's. I think he might be my favorite of the avatars. I mean, look at that. The, the <laughs> well, two two. Also, he might have he might have been on the the uh, the subway. So. Yeah. Uh, right. True. Confirmation: He isn't lost forever. Oh no. Mark, where are you? Um, Car 54. I can, can actually check and see if he's online really quick. Cause he comes and he games with us every once in a while in a different group. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Good. Glad to hear he's, that. He's not online right now, though. So um, I obviously uh, still have not gotten the OBS thing working, um, but uh, we do need to do – we need to, uh, to get on um, the um, Phasmo – the Phasmo thing, because I think that'd be really. How many fun. people here have done it at all? Have done what? Phasmo? Phasmo. Hmm? Not, not I. But it it looks pretty straightforward. Uh, it's just a you know, uh, basically, uh, what do you call those games where you you know you use the key computer keyboard to navigate? Yeah, I mean yeah. that's it's pretty much that. But the, the reason this game has become such a phenomenon, mm -hmm. you know, no pun intended with the pH, but is because <laughs> everybody loves the whole idea of like ghost hunting. I mean, that's obviously you've seen the shows about it for years and years and years. And hauntings in general is always a big topic with people. They love that stuff. Mm. This game puts you like right in the middle of it. Plus, it also has a VR feature. So if you have VR, you can actually get in there with VR, and that makes it ten times more terrifying. <laughs> um, and the way that it works is that you, you know, you literally go to. They have a bunch of different places: small houses, cabins, high school, uh, a prison, um, an asylum, and you go to these places and you you know, hunt for ghosts. You have to use an EMF meter and temperature and all that. Mm -hmm. So, and here, what I'll do really quick, just to make it easy, all you gotta do obviously is mouse over my name. And I know it's not streaming to your Twitch, but you know, for the second half, you can at least see some of it and experience exactly kind of what, you know, you get yourself into there. Because what makes this game more than anything is you can't run oh. at all. Like you can speed walk a little, but you can't really run. So, <laughs> When you actually get into um, a house, yeah. per se, uh, you and the ghost starts hunting, you can't do anything about it. And I'll, uh, I'll literally walk in to one house just long enough so that you can hear and experience what this sounds like. Because if there's anything that epitomizes horror, 
it's you know audio yeah so what they do is they set you up and you start like in the trailer of a truck with all your equipment that you buy and then you have somebody that usually stays in the truck and you have a radio that you talk back and forth through um they give you hints like you know this ghost only likes being around people that are alone or you know it's good with people that are in a group or uh it likes it dark they you know have demons uh trying to think of onai there's a whole there's like nine different types of ghosts nice and they all have the different types so as soon as this loads in you'll right away like as soon as i walk into the house you'll immediately feel the the atmosphere and why this is so much fun for people because it's a there's a lot of jump scare stuff but there's also that tension that builds from the way the house sounds there's different levels you can you know intermediate and uh professional level and it depends on you know the how long before the ghost starts hunting you yeah excellent that sounds great man it, yeah i i really you know I mean, I've played a few games where it's something like that, you know, and then there's like things like Five Nights at Freddy's, which I think I mentioned last time, you know, which is very different, obviously. But um, but it, it's any anything that approaches like, you know, where the where the basically your choices are relatively restricted uh, and it's all about the mood and the, and the and the kind of the, you know, the sense of dread overhanging the entire endeavor like that's just that's just a great game i mean if, to me like if you can do that you know you can really sell that um so i'm, I'm looking forward to doing to jumping into this can um, you actually feel it yet i feel it man i feel it hard right now dread and lots of it we, we should get this on the page. <laughs> yeah so i'm sorry we can't uh Oh, not right now. Yeah, I don't. That's we we, we need OBS to get that going. Um, so that's wonder, the. Yeah, go ahead, Adam. I, was saying, I, I wonder. Uh, there's got to be a modding team. Oh, there I is. I wonder if, uh, if we could do <laughs> somewhere in Mudbound. Well, they pretty much everything. And by the way, me talking here is probably going to end up getting me killed. But <laughs> um, the uh, as far as the. Um, the modding, like the, it's only ever interiors. There's never exterior stuff, so it would have to be houses or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, modding communities are. You can do a lot of cool shit. That's awesome. Hopefully. Um, sorry, I'm kind of a little distracted because I'm trying to work something out here. Um, well, yeah, we. Um, let's. I don't know. God, I got it. I I'll, t I'll tell you what, Mike. I'll I'll, uh, I'll get OBS running this week if I can, and uh, and then I'll I'll hit you up and we'll we'll see what we can do about. I guess everybody just yeah, has to. Yeah, we can to, at least try and test it. Yeah, yeah, we just basically just have to. A number of us have to download and install the game, and then uh, jump in together, and then one of us streams it, right? So, or yeah, several. I mean, the of, most like you, you can have in any one game is four people. So okay. And um, and. Uh, and there's no way to switch points of view from any one game, right? It's just always your own point of view, and that's it, right? It, who, it depends on who's streaming, because you can switch. If, like, you have a bunch of people, because anybody can stream through this way. So if everybody had OBS, they could run that. Yeah, no, I meant, I was just trying to figure out if there's a way to switch points of view without multiple streams. But, okay, yeah, no, it makes sense that you, you only see your own point of view in the game. And then to see other points of view, we'd have to have multiple streams running. And just switch between them in OBS, which you know could work. We could do that. I mean, certainly it's been done. Um, so let's, yeah, let's try to do that. Yeah, and definitely, like, if you get the chance, I keep hearing the footsteps. <laughs> <laughs> if you, uh, if you get the chance to actually, like, you know, get the game and play it for a little bit, then it really makes a huge difference. Understanding pure terror that this game can and they do some wonderful things with the ghosts in here because they sometimes they'll appear like standing next to a wall all Blair Witch style and start singing <laughs> which is terrifying excellent and Lovely. they throw stuff around and they hiss at you from like off in the distance yeah it's uh 
and yeah. there's a sanity quotient so like the longer i'm here in the dark the lower my sanity gets the sooner the thing will hunt me which is kind of what i'm waiting for right now just so you can kind of experience you that. can't fool me i know there's no such a thing as a sanity clause <laughs> just gonna sit here quoting random marx brothers lines all night i think it just are you hearing it as clearly as i am i'm not hearing anything because i'm not able to to do that at the same time Oh, right, right, right. You can't actually get into this. Oh, I, I could. You. I mean, I guess I guess I would have to. Oh, let's see. I mean, you're... Just you're... mouse over my name. Let's see. Let me see. Um, because I could give I could give us the audio um, if I do that. Oh, absolutely. I'm on my phone. How do I do it? How do I get to you from my phone? In see, my, my name should be on the list on the left. Um, in, in Discord. Yeah, I'm in Discord. Uh, so I go up to the to the to what the chats, or to, um, I'm in the Mandible Judy channel. Yeah. Right, and then on the left side, like you click on the, you might be able to swipe it to the side and find my name. And then you should just be able to hold your finger on my name for a second, and then it'll say join stream or just... watch stream. So it's definitely this room. Uh, join stream. Uh, All right, we're hearing your game. Yep. Now you're in there. We, I think it means we don't hear anybody else. You can do some laundry. Yeah. Oh yeah, we can hear everybody. Great. Yeah, good. So this room has obviously freezing temperatures, which I can see my my breath. Um, my little EMF. So this is this is this is. Here's the breath. This is a yeah, special Twitch, a special Twitch presentation of Phasmo with that's no visual, cool, yeah. <laughs> just right. the sound. Well, don't worry, the the sound will be enough, I promise, because you can hear the. the is that door, a heart monitor? Are you dying? No, that's actually called an EMF meter, which means oh, yeah. it's something just did something oh, close dude, to me. I yeah, uh, I mean, I I'm pretty sure. I'm not gonna Everybody knows what an EMF meter is. Yeah. I mean, I, I've watched Supernatural, okay, so, you know. And if you're in, like, if you actually hear, hear the stream, you'll hear that footstep come up. And if something does hunt me, my heart will start pounding and... Is there a clock ticking? Yes, there is. This is great because right. I'm not looking at the visual. I'm just trying to judge what's happening by the sound. And it's also, like, if you hear now it's louder because everything in the game... Ugh trying to close the door on me <laughs> oh yeah absolutely when it hunts it locks the main door you can't leave the house you have to try and hide in a closet or outrun it and if it's the wrong kind of demon you can't outrun it and it's wonderfully terrifying so what I'll do is I'll actually stay here until it hunts me and then try and escape just so you can see how terrifying it is even if you just hear it because how many of you are actually seeing this two of you yeah, I can I can I'm see watching. it. Let's see, I'm trying to figure out how to make it full screen. There it goes. Uh, <laughs> if you're out there on Twitch and you want to look at this, come to the Mandible Judy Discord. Yes, there we go. Yes. And and uh, jump in the public broadcast service. Oh 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 yeah, it's beautiful, lovely graphics. Uh, I'm gonna get hunted. So that's a flashlight, I assume, is why why we yeah that yeah. Oh. Oh yeah, this will get your heart racing fast when you're actually playing it. So I'm curious, why is that? VR. Go ahead. Why is what? what? What were you saying, Adam? One of you asked a question. No, I, Chris, say say your thing. Um, why is the clock ever present? Are you carrying it? Are you? Oh. You're gonna die. Yeah. No. This is why the clock is ever present. Yeah, but it's you walk away from it, it's still the same volume. It should get quiet. No, no, no. You hear how loud it is here? Yeah. Listen. 
Okay. Uh, it does get quieter. Yeah. yeah. All right. Oh, good. Yeah, I've got so... Some friends who, uh, who have VR headsets and shit. And oh. Uh, it is the most horrifying. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because they're right when that, like, that... When that one just showed up a minute ago, um, that that's oh. all right. He's hunting. <laughs> the Twitch streamers have no idea what we're looking at right Twitch now. streamers have no idea unless they no took Adam's um, um, advice and went to our Discord. But yeah, that's awesome. That's really pretty yeah. Awesome. This is something that yeah, it, with like a group of people together, you want to talk about good horror. <laughs> Yeah. That's it. This is absolutely it. All right, I'm not going to burn up your stream with this for the whole time. No, I just no, wanted you to actually... Um, I, I wanted you to see it so that you knew what you were really getting yourself Welcome into. Back. Welcome back. But yeah, it's it's uh, it's pretty unforgettable, I'll tell you that. So... Um... Uh, <laughs> trying to figure out. Do right. I, am I still hearing your your game streaming? No, no. Okay. I I, I turned well, it off. Oh, you You're did anyway. Okay. Okay. Great. Yeah. All right. Awesome. I didn't want to waste your entire like the, the last half of it. <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah. it's totally fine. Um. <laughs> well, I mean, I think we we probably uh, could end it early. We we uh, we didn't get uh, a single female um, cast uh -huh. member. And I'm very sad. It does happen. And, you know, it's funny because the other, uh, is it Amanda that did the, the voice for yeah. the other video game, the horror one? Yeah. Yeah. Because there's that one. I've got that one, too, which is, it's a lot more jump scary than that one is. Yes. And has less, you know, because it's not, in that one, you're trying to hunt the ghost. you got to find three pieces of evidence to figure out what kind of ghost it is. And yeah. then they have things like they want you to, get the ghost to walk through salt or get a picture of the ghost <laughs> or something like that. So right. they actually have a bunch of things that you need to do. Whereas in the other games, it's just survive. Right. <laughs> Which mm. after a while that just kind of gets tedious. Yeah. Yeah. But it's still fun at first, especially, you know, Amanda's performance in, in devour is terrifying and, and perfectly. Well oh, done. it's not Amanda. It's um, Aaron. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. you're confusing yes. your 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 cast members. Yeah. Always. Yeah, it's okay. Always. Amanda is, is, uh, has been in a number of animes, including Utena and a few others. And uh, right. Aaron and Aaron, um, I mean, bo both of them have done other vo voice work as well. But yeah, Aaron's uh, Aaron was in uh, in the the horror game you're talking about. And. Um, but yeah, if you yeah. like, especially during this next week or so, if you you know advertise you're going to try to run a phasmophobia thing. Yeah you'll probably get some people awesome because it's it's pretty hot right now it's one of those things you know, oh, everybody's cool. trying to find it and the fans of this show yeah knowing that you're going to play a horror game yeah which is going to scare the hell out of everybody <laughs> so beautiful and it does it does every single time like i can't tell you i I've, I've been playing it long enough now that you know it doesn't really make me jump as much but there's still still gets my heart racing but for the first couple of times you're in the game, I can't tell you how many people have been like, nope, nope, I'm out. Screw it. Bye. They just, <laughs> they just leave. They can't handle it. Yeah. It's, I can... it's very psychological. So I think you'd enjoy it. Yeah. Awesome. As long as you take your heart medication. Right. Well, on that note, I think we'll uh, we'll say goodnight for the evening. Um, you guys, no th doubt. thanks so much, uh, everybody, for being here. And... Um, we uh work in progress we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna streamline this this trivia game make it a little more yes. interesting. I'll, add, I'll add a bunch of, of uh, questions i'll make sure the same ones don't come up i'm not sure how that happened i set the randomizer to new pick each time and it still picked the same one that one time but um it randomly selected the same question twice exactly oh, but it should yeah. it should you can tell it not to select to always select a new question um but maybe after it selects one new question, then it goes back to selecting whatever question, you know, that might be how it works. Also, it probably wouldn't be a bad idea that instead of putting yourself on the, the panel, like you just asked the questions. 
Yeah. Yeah. Like the host. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, the plan was to have Aaron do that, uh, and she couldn't oh, make it right. at the last minute. So I, I just kind of threw myself into that. Kind of, but yeah, gotcha. absolutely. And we only had a few contestants, so I wanted to add another contestant just to yeah, mix good it up. Point. Good point. But um, thanks anyway, you guys. Thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Would love to see you all next Thursday if you're around. Um, Always fun. And uh, look for new under dead water or next Wednesday. And I nice. will be hitting up a number of you, probably everybody at some point, to do something in under dead water. So to be Adam, under. are you sticking around? Are you busy? Yeah. Are you going to bed? All right, because I wanted to finish the discussion about the gaming stuff. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, we could do that here on the air if we want to. <laughs> we could. Yeah, uh -huh. I mean, it doesn't. Uh, it... I, I don't know. We're going to be shilling for a whole lot of things that aren't sponsoring us. <laughs> no, that's okay. I I just I'm just I'm just uh I'm just like I don't really have enough visual going on on Twitch to make this interesting visually. That's oh, the yeah. only reason why I'm kind of cutting it early ish. Um, sure. But um, save that. Uh, talk about it by all means uh, after we get off, and then and then uh, talk about it again next week, and we'll yeah. <laughs> or something like it, and I'll be more prepared. Um, thanks again, guys. I appreciate it. Have a great Thanks, week. Chris. Yep, and we'll talk. Um, I'll right. I'll reach out to you this weekend, Mike, about um, OBS and and planning stuff. Oh, yeah, sounds good. Thanks, man. All right, guys. Adam, thank you for coming. Right. Glenn, for having us be around. Yeah, yeah, thanks. no doubt. All right.